I am the first bishop in the whole Orthodox Church worldwide. Uh, you may know that in the Orthodox Church we have the principle of the autocephalous churches, that is to say, independent churches, uh, which are free to coordinate and organize their internal affairs. The Holy Synods of these local uh, churches elect uh, their primate, and the role of the ecumenical patriarch, as it is the historic title of the patriarch of Constantinople, today Istanbul, is a role of uh, primacy, of honor and love, uh, and a role of coordination among all the Orthodox churches throughout the world. Uh, we have many examples, even from the uh, recent history of our church, where this uh, role of coordination uh, of the ecumenical patriarchate is quite clear. And also the ecumenical patriarchate has uh, the duty to assist, to help uh, the other sister Orthodox churches when they have internal problems, uh, for the solution of which uh, they need uh, the higher assistance of the first see of the Holy Orthodox Church. Recently, only a few years ago, we had such cases with the Patriarchate of Jerusalem, the Autocephalous Church of Cyprus, uh, which asked for the assistance, the intervention of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, and we offered this uh, brotherly assistance with uh, great love. So this is the role of the Ecumenical Patriarch within the Orthodox uh, family. We also coordinate dialogues with the other Christian churches and denominations. Uh, in fact, it was on the initiative of the Ecumenical Patriarchate that we started 20, almost 25 years ago, uh, an official bilateral theological dialogue with the Church of Rome, with the Anglican Communion, the Lutheran World Federation, and so on. We have uh, this kind of dialogues, theological dialogues, I repeat, with all the other uh, uh, Christian brothers and sisters. But 25 years ago, the Ecumenical Patriarchate took the initiative to initiate academic dialogues with the other monotheistic religions as well, Islam and Judaism, and uh, we have uh, convoked conferences, meetings with them, some of them in Istanbul, uh, in my see, uh, under the title uh, Peace and Tolerance. You were considered first among equals of yes. the non-patriarchs. Now, why is that? This is uh, out of historical reasons, because uh, Constantinople, today Istanbul, was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, and uh, as such, uh, the ecumenical uh, councils, especially the second one, 381, and the fourth ecumenical council, 451, gave some uh, pre prerogatives to the Church of Constantinople, uh, w which uh, are always valid, and that is why today, in the 21st century, uh, the same hierarchical order and the same church discipline is valid in, in the pan-Orthodox family, and all the other sister uh, Orthodox churches do recognize uh, this primacy of love and honor uh, to the Church of Constantinople, which, is, which primacy is not a primacy of domination of, or of uh, uh, jurisdiction, but it is a primacy of uh, service. Uh, we interpret our primacy as such, as service uh, to the unity of the Orthodox family. And, uh, as I said, to coordinate pan-Orthodox affairs. But, uh, the great uh, schism, uh, separation between the Christian East and the Christian West uh, took place in the year 10, 
1954. Since uh, we are unfortunately separated, and all all of the theological uh, dialogues among divided Christians I mentioned aim to re-establish this unity between uh, East and West. In the meantime, unfortunately, in the Christian West, we had another division, Protestantism, right. left the Roman Catholic Church and formed another church group with several uh, subdivisions, so to say. And uh, our dialogue with them, too, with our Protestant uh, brothers and sisters, same uh, the said to the same uh, sacred goal, the re-establishment of perfect unity. Uh, so in the Christian East, uh, which remained uh, without communion with the Western Christianity, the Patriarch of Constantinople uh, became the first, and we have a, a, a well-established hierarchical order according to which, uh, after Constantinople, we have the Patriarchate of Alexandria, and then Antioch, and then Jerusalem. And these are the four uh, ancient Patriarchates of the Christian East. And then we have the Patriarchates of Eastern Europe, uh, Russia, Serbia, uh, Romania, and so on. And uh, after them, we have uh, autocephalous, independent Orthodox churches, uh, which do not bear uh, the title of a patriarchate. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia and all other uh, sister churches, uh, which are uh, autocephalous today, until uh, the 16th century, were uh, under the jurisdiction of Constantinople. In the 16th century, Russia became autocephalous, independent, and much later, the other churches in the Balkans became also autocephalous churches. Uh, some say uh, ethnic churches. Uh, I don't like this term. Uh, I would like local. Uh, I would like to say local, uh, independent, or autocephalous churches because orthodoxy is not, must not be identified with ethnicities. Orthodoxy is an open to everybody. Exactly. It, open are, to everybody. Are there doctrinal differences or are there? No, uh, between, uh, among the orthodox, local orthodox churches, there is no and any it, doctrinal uh, and, difference. And between the West and between? Uh, the main, the main uh, difference between us is the primacy of the Pope, the right. primacy of uh, the Bishop of Rome within the context of the whole uh, Christian Church. According to the uh, belief, the interpretation of the Roman Catholic Church, this primacy is a pri primacy jure divino, uh, given by God. And uh, it gives to the Pope as such uh, jurisdiction uh, all over the Christian world. According to the interpretation uh, of uh, uh, our Orthodox Church, this primacy of the Bishop of Rome is exactly as it is today the primacy of the Church of Constantinople with, within the Orthodox family. Now, uh, in the framework of uh, our theological dialogue between Catholic and, Catholics and Orthodox, uh, the main uh, issue under uh, deliberation, under discu discussion, is precisely the matter of, of the issue of primacy. Uh, differentiates uh, Rome and uh, Orthodoxy. And this dialogue, with goodwill and mutual understanding and love, uh, will continue until we reach uh, a common agreement, a consensus. And you think that's possible? Uh, it is possible. We must be optimistic. Uh, in the gospel, it is. It is in the gospel. It is said that whatever is impossible to human beings, it is possible to God. And we pray and work to realize His divine will, which is that all those who believe in Him 
may be uh, one. Uh, it will take uh, time because the separation between East and West uh, goes back to 11th century and such a large uh, gap of uh, almost 10 centuries is not easy to fulfill uh, from one day to another. But it is very important that we have uh, started, initiated this dialogue of love at the beginning and later on dialogue of truth, sure. aggressivity to, to each other, but uh, really, truly as brothers in, in Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, we aspire, uh, both of us, uh, the same uh, full and perfect units used to say that uh, uh, Orthodox and Catholics are almost united, <laughs> quasi <laughs> uniti. Uh, so we must yeah. work and yeah. pray uh, to uh, lift up, uh, to, to yeah. eliminate this yeah. almost and to have a perfect union Talk according to the will of our Lord. My understanding is that somewhere between 250 and 300 million members of the Orthodox Church. Yes, throughout the world. Okay, throughout the world. I think it was Al Gore, but it may have been someone else, who first called you the Green Patriarch. <laughs> uh, you accept that? Thank you. It's an honor for me. Uh, it is uh, recognition, if you like, of our humble uh, environmental activities. Uh, it is good uh, uh, for uh, uh, more general uh, uh, spreading uh, yeah. out of this environmental message. Your, your message is spiritual, that it is a spiritual responsibility it is. of the church and its leaders it is. I used to, to connect to the planet a spirituality. I used to say that uh, uh, the ecological problem is not uh, merely an economic or a political problem. It is mainly a spiritual and ethical question uh, because it shows uh, our relation not only to God or with God, but also our relations God who is the creator of everything according to our faith, but also our relation to his creation. Because uh, creation as, as the creation of God is also sacred. And we have to respect it and to protect it according to the order of the first book of the Old Testament. Uh, and simply to use it and not to abuse it, uh, thinking of the coming generations uh, who must uh, share the same treasures, the same resources of the planet as we do uh, today. So how do you plan to use your influence uh, mainly, to make a difference? Mainly, uh, as I said, uh, through uh, creating uh, consciousness right. of uh, our responsibility uh, of, uh, for respect and protection of uh, the, 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 the natural environment, the planet, of uh, which we are simply stewards and not owners. All right. Um, you also have interesting ideas about the global economy. Well, <laughs> We, Give us your economic. We, we, we live and we experience uh, economic, world economic crisis, all of us. Yes. Uh, but in the last analysis, uh, this economic uh, crisis uh, is a crisis of values and priorities. Uh, if uh, there goes to be more uh, social uh, justice, mm. uh, more human uh, approach uh, to poverty, uh, more love in the uh, Christian So you, you, you ask economic leaders and business leaders not to forget 
the fact that do we have too large a segment of the population that are poor and uh, the rich and we have to re-establish the balance. Uh, what would you have them do? Please call the Pope in one of his messages uh, of uh, the first day of the new year, which is always a message on, on the day of peace, as it is uh, declared, proclaimed by the Church of Rome, said that uh, if we don't have uh, social uh, justice, we cannot obtain uh, permanent uh, peace uh, around the globe. So we have to understand the problems of the so-called uh, third world uh, or any uh, poor uh, fellow human being and to be of help. Of course, this is mainly the job of politicians, of uh, uh, leaders of great financial organizations. Uh, the only message that uh, people of religion like myself uh, could uh, give to the world community is uh, to respect everybody, all human beings, as created at the image and likeness of God and uh, to be of, of help. Jesus Christ said that whatever you do for my uh, lay, uh, smallest, uh, poorest uh, people, brothers, you are doing uh, to me. So he, the Lord, identifies himself with those uh, people. And whatever we do for them, we do for Christ. Uh, you, you can realize our uh, great responsibility do you in, think we in, have, in this context. Have we forgotten that, you think, as a society? Unfortunately, yes. And we have to rebuild uh, a, a more uh, uh, just or uh, world community. The world is not just, but I can't, I can't find the other. Uh, f fair. 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 Exactly. Fair. Yeah, fair. Um, so the sense of, of looking at this global economic crisis that we are just beginning to recover from, uh, that was fueled by uh, economic success in part. I mean, you admonish all leaders uh, to, to think of those least among us who have not benefited and, and as we understand the benefits of, of a free market and the benefits of, of different economic systems exactly. make sure that we do not realize that everyone does not benefit uh, exactly. and exactly. that we have a responsibility and it's a spiritual responsibility and this to our fellow. This will be at the last analysis to the benefit of ourselves, of all of the human uh, community, because this will be a great contribution uh, to, towards uh, creating a stable uh, peace around the globe and uh, mutual understanding and avoid aggressivities, uh, avoid the revolutions of those uh, oppressed, and will bring peace and uh, equality which will be, I repeat it, to the benefit uh, of, of all of the human community. One might ask with respect, is the church doing enough? Is the church communicating well enough? Um, whether it's Islam, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Judaism, the huge responsibility to have us understand values, fairness, to equity. Be, to be honest, no. Religion has done a lot throughout the centuries. For us Christians, Christianity gives the strongest uh, message and the essence of uh, our Christian faith is love and respect for the human person. But uh, neither Christianity nor the other monotheistic religions uh, succeeded to bring uh, peace and uh, love and respect uh, all over the globe, as we experience it uh, every day. Uh, 
because uh, representatives of religions are also human uh, beings, uh, it means not perfect. They have their own uh, sins. They have their own incapacities and willingnesses to fulfill uh, their sacred responsibilities. Uh, sometimes not internal but objective external reasons uh, prohibit us mm. to fulfill uh, our sacred mission and task and that is why uh, whatever religions proclaim and promise is not uh, the reality in uh, the life of uh, humanity. What happens, it seems to many, is that the extreme edges of various religious faiths capture uh, and use for themselves the majesty of the church or the soul of the church and use it for political ends? In some cases in history, yes. Uh, we, we cannot uh, reject it. It is a reality. But I remember now that when uh, only a few months after my election as ecumenical patriarch, uh, I convened all the heads of the Orthodox churches uh, at the Patriarchate in Istanbul. And we had uh, the first synaxis of the heads of the Orthodox churches. We signed all together a message to our faithful and to the world. And in that text of our message, we condemned the using uh, of religion for political and uh, nationalistic uh, purposes and uh, goals. So uh, today, uh, officially, the Orthodox Church rejects uh, the use or abuse mm. of, of, of religion but, for political uh, purposes. But so many wars also have been fought about religion, uh, or not? Uh, sometimes we misinterpret uh, conflicts and uh, wars as uh, being uh, created by religion. When it's about power. Uh, but uh, in fact it is politics or political interests that provoke uh, these conflicts and not religion. I, I, I believe that uh, the recent uh, conflicts in the Balkans, uh, although were interpreted as uh, a clash or conflict between faiths and religions, uh, it was only for political uh, interests or economic interests that uh, uh, they took place, not out of uh, difference of religious beliefs. Some of the most savage fighting in, during the Iraqi war uh, was, was between Shiites and uh, Sunni within the church. The sectarian battles were the most intense. Uh, yet at the same time, there's a great hope now uh, in Iraq you know, that, that Kurds and Sunni and Shia can come together. That is why we, we need uh, the interfaith dialogue, and that is why the Ecumenical Patriarchate received this message uh, 25 years ago and initiated these dialogues between different faiths uh, among the monotheistic religions in order to bring more understanding and mutual respect and to avoid uh, religious fanaticism. Uh, Fun fundamentalism and to give the opportunity to human beings to see each other as brothers uh, because we are all created by the same God 
and as such uh, we are brothers and sisters between ourselves. We have the same Heavenly Father, whatever we call Him. And as being His... We of all religions children, have the same Heavenly Father. Of course, God is but one. Uh, independently on the name uh, we give Him. Uh, Allah or, or uh, Yahweh right, right. and so on. God is one and we are his children and we have to love and understand each other. How are you doing with the Turkish government? Now better. <laughs> <laughs> it is true that we have had serious problems. Yes. Uh, as Greek Orthodox community, as Ecumenical Patriarchate, and uh, all the other minorities living in Turkey. Now uh, the situation is much better. Uh, our Prime Minister is working hardly to bring uh, Turkey into the European Union as a full member. This is a real and concrete aspiration of the present uh, administration. And we uh, minorities have already experienced some positive uh, changes uh, with and the other cultures. And from this point of view, we appreciate very much the initiative of the Turkish prime minister and the Spanish prime minister uh, to bring together and closer uh, the civilizations, Christian, Western, mm -hmm. and uh, Eastern or uh, Muslim civilization, this is uh, a, a, a need, a must uh, in, in our era. You wrote a book called Encountering the Mystery, Understanding Orthodox Christianity Today. What's the mystery? The mystery is uh, whatever exists behind uh, visible things. Uh, Orthodoxy, Eastern Christianity, uh, pays a great uh, attention and value uh, to spirituality, to non-seen things, non-seen but lived experienced out of faith, because of our faith. And these things are eternal, are permanent, do not uh, change. Uh, they are created by God as uh, values, valid for all generations, all places, all the ages. And uh, the fathers, uh, especially the Desert Fathers of the Christian East, uh, have uh, spoken repeatedly on the necessity to uh, transcend uh, material things, the needs of this world, and to try to approach and live and experience the mysteries of uh, the Kingdom of God uh, who is coming, uh, not simply coming, but according to the Gospel, uh, start since uh, this uh, very uh, life on earth. So uh, my intention was to, to remind uh, people of these values, these eternal things, these things not seen with our uh, eyes, but uh, which is nevertheless uh, reality and uh, which uh, gives us uh, hope uh, for uh, the kingdom of God and for eternity. It is said with respect about you that this high exalted place that you set uh, has been, and sometimes honorific, but that you, you, have energized it, have made it more powerful, have made it more visible, have made it more 
uh, part of the conversation. What have you done? Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think that uh, simply as a servant of God and of my faithful, I try to do my best uh, according to the necessities and the possibilities of today, beginning of the 21st century, to be in uh, contact with the reality of everyday life, not uh, to live only in theory or only within the walls of the church, uh, but to be present in, among uh, my faithful uh, everywhere. That is why I travel a lot, and sometimes I am criti criticized that uh, I travel too much. But my, my uh, feeling is that uh, I have uh, to bring the message of the gospel, the love of the church, the sympathy of the church, all over the world. Uh, if you like, if uh, I am permitted to say, not only to Orthodox faithful, but to all human beings, an environment for which we work and uh, try to, to, to make a small contribution is not a matter of Orthodox only. It is a matter of uh, uh, all of human beings. Uh, I try to uh, transmit the message of love and respect, of course, for God, our, our Creator, for all of our fellow human beings, and for the creation, which, I repeat, is sacred because it came out of the hands of God. Uh, the Ecumenical Patriarchate is a very, very important historic religious institution based in Turkey, uh, in Istanbul of today, uh, for 1,700 years, if you can imagine, Mr. Rose. And uh, such uh, an old institution which offered so many things to, to, uh, to the church and to the humankind, not only as religion, but also as civilization, culture, uh, must be protected in order to survive and to continue its ecumenical uh, mission, its ecumenical message, which is spiritual, is human, is a message of love, tolerance, reconciliation, uh, this is what I try to do, and if there is such a positive uh, appreciation of my uh, humble deeds, this is an honor for me. As it is for me to sit with you, Your Old Holiness, I thank you very much for this time. Thank you.